you know, northern and eastern provinces of our country and to formulate the necessary strategies. Particularly, I hope that the main purpose of this conference is to identify the development gaps in the fields of education and health and to find the ways and means to fill such gaps. At this juncture, once again I express my sincere thanks and appreciation to the Canadian Travel Congress for having invited the ministers, members of parliament and officers from the northern and eastern provinces along with uh, Canadian and international experts and providing such an opportunity to discuss in connection with education, health and economic conditions prevailing in northern and eastern province and to find solution for such things. So it is uh, a fact that the development of Tamil regions has been in a backward position owing to the long time political struggling of Tamil people, the educational, social, economical and cultural conditions to are uh, found in a backward position in our region due to war, displacement, natural disaster and the poverty state of rural people. To come out of such things, we need the combined efforts of the government, organization and individual personalities. We all are aware that the education is the basic factor for the social and economic development. But the achievements of the educational efforts in the eastern province are inadequate. It will hinder the future development in the long run. Hence, it is important to take the substantial decision pertaining to the educational activities in the eastern province. The same is to be done regarding health sector in the region. So we are aware the willingness of Tamils live abroad to contribute towards education and health to improve their standard. Finally, I would like to make a kind request to you to provide expertise and financial assistance to alleviate such deficits. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister Thandari Devani, for those um, kind words. Um, last but not least, I would like to invite Director of Education from your Clinton District School Board, uh, Mr. J. Parapalli, to say greetings, and we would start a conference right after that. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Nathan. It's a privilege to be here at the Quest for Knowledge, a conference for Tamil educators. Minister Hunter, distinguished ministers from the northern and eastern provinces, honored guests, fellow educators, good morning. A few months ago, we held our annual Quest Conference, a conference that brings together people from around the world to talk about improving student achievement and well-being. One of our keynote speakers Rat France Davis told us about her journey as an educator. She spoke about the value of accessing a community of like-minded educators, a community that enabled her to learn what others were doing, access knowledge and resources, and share her ideas and experiences. That is what I see here today, a community of people gathered together because we share a common goal, to help our young people reach their full potential. I want to congratulate the organizers for providing this wonderful opportunity and to acknowledge all of you here for being a part of this community of learning and sharing today. We can achieve so much more for our students when we work together, and this conference is a great opportunity to do that. In the York Region District School Board, we have three foundational practices, equity, innovation, and leadership. That emphasizes our commitment to embedding these practices in the decisions that we make and the work that we do across our system. 
Our, our commitment to equity reflects our belief that every student can reach his or her full potential given access to rich learning experiences and appropriate time and support. Achieving this means recognizing and value our students' unique identities, goals, and learning needs. It means building relationships with families and community partners. And it means providing safe, inclusive, and welcoming learning environment to foster student achievement and well-being. I want to acknowledge the valuable work being done by our own educators for Tamil students, their success in the YRDSB to support the students, to share information, and most importantly, celebrate the achievement of our students, and build the important relationship with parents and members of the Tamil communities in York Region and in this province. Just this past week, they held a curriculum night to celebrate Tamil culture and share resources among educators for Tamil Heritage Month. This event was a great opportunity to support educators in enhancing understanding of Tamil culture and the contributions Tamil Canadians make to our society. It's also a great example of people from across the system coming together to help our students succeed. As I said, we are more successful when we work together. Our foundational practices that I mentioned, equity, innovation and leadership, and our focus areas, modern learning, mathematics and mental health are laid out in our board improvement plan for student achievement and well-being. This is on our website. I hope to provide a guidance for what can be done in the northern and eastern provinces of Sri Lanka. This living document includes systems, school, and classroom action, and includes useful resources for links for all staff members. This plan helps to guide and align the work taking place across the system and is designed to affect student outcomes and experiences in the classroom. That is what our work is all about, making a difference for our students. One of the other things that keynote speaker Rakranz Davis talked about at Quest was the power of a caring adult to change the course of a student's life. That is what you do, and why I encourage you to take this opportunity to learn and share with each other. The mission statement of the York Region District School Board is this, to advance student achievement and well-being through public education, which motivates learners, fosters inclusion, inspires innovation, and builds community. And when we say build community, it's not just the local community, it's the global community. And together, we can come together to build the community of the northern and eastern provinces of Sri Lanka. That is why we're here today. Thank you again for being here and all that you do to make a difference for our young people. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Director. So we have just completed our formal portion of the conference for, uh, Monday, uh, for Sunday. We're going to go right into the um, uh, presentation. So we'll have the Northern Province Education Context first. So I would like to invite the speakers up so they could sit closer to the front. Uh, that would be um, Minister Gurgularaja, Secretary Mr. Ravindran, and Dr. Indravira Singham and uh, Mr. Sarveswaran from the uh, university. If you could come up. And what I would like to ask you to do is, um, you may have your own order, how you're gonna do the presentation. And when you're presenting, please introduce yourselves um, and then start the presentation. And uh, just before we do that, I wanted to, um, honor all those who are here from North and East Province. So can you please stand up so we can see how many people are actually here from Sri Lanka today? Thank you so much for making your way out here. Thank you, and we will promise to do whatever we can to help North and East Provinces in the education sector. So we could start the first presentation, and I would like to invite Secretary uh, Mr. R. Ravindran. You're going to do the uh, first portion of that. Thank you.
that schools now fall as the primary super schools. So on the counter department of education, they have two institutions, that is the big tech. Founded Information Technology Center, it is in Monia. And another one is the best Brownell Education, Brownell English Support Center. That is in Manna. So another Department of Education, two institutions are functioning. And the Sonal Education Office, some institutions are functioning. The DTC Teacher Centers, only three or four teacher centers out of 12 zones. Only three or four zones have the teacher centers. From the teacher centers, they are giving the training for teachers and they are implementing the government curriculum to these teacher centers. And the rest, regional English support center, that is also some zonal division, zonal division has the regional English support center. And the CRC, that is the Computer Resource Center. Now we are constructing three computer, uh, computer resource centers, Parambrati Zone, Yatna Zone, and Bariyaman Zone. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Manatulu Center already functioning. So this one is the area I already explained that is a dual zone and very good sense. This is our chart of our ministry. Under the ministry, we have financial unit and seed accountant and two <coughs> good branch and engineers, architect and uh, district engineers. The planning unit, we have director of planning, as a director of planning and other staff. The administrative unit, we have the excellent secretary, seven city officers and other staff. Teacher establishment unit, we have deputy director of education and other staff. Education research and development unit, and the early childhood unit also in my ministry. This is a provincial director of education, organized in charge. Under the provincial director of education, three. Additional provincial directors are working. Additional provincial director administration, additional provincial director development, and additional provincial director general. Under that, other staff are working. <coughs> this is a functioning school in the Northern Province. Already I told 12 zones in the Northern Province. In the 2010, 800. 17 school were functioned. Now, in 2016, 998 schools are now functioning. This is Yatna Zone. Yatna Zone, we have four national schools, 109 provincial schools, and private school three, total. The total number of schools, 116. <coughs> Out of 116, 104 schools are functioning in the Yatna zones. And same time, Yatna zone have three divisions. Like the Yatna, the blue color zone, Yatna zone, and green color is Kopai division, and the orange color in Nano divisions. So the Valley Amman zone, second. So this is a big zone in the Northern Province. The Valley Amman zone, only one national schools, 151 provincial schools, and two total number of schools, 154. Out of total 154 schools, 137 schools are now functioning. Here in the divisions, the yellow color Sangana divisions, the dark green color Sandipa divisions, the red color Telipala division, and the light green color the Uribe divisions. 
So in the in this division, the Telipala division, most of the highest of security zones are there. Up to now, the the military occupies that area. That area are not released. Most of the places, so most of the places, the like school also closed. The Madamrachi zone, National School One, Provincial School Eighty Six, Private School Zero. Total number of schools eighty seven. Out of eighty seven schools, eighty one schools are functioning. The Madamrachi zone has three divisions. One is the Karavati division in the orange color. So the Merlangani division is the another one, and Point Pico division, the three divisions. So in the Tenmaraji zone, again, one national school, sixty-seven provincial schools, and one private school altogether, sixty-nine schools out of sixty-nine schools, six sixty schools are functioning at present. We have only one zone. That is only one zone. Island zone. So here, seventy-seven provincial schools are number of schools in seventy-seven. Out of number seventy-seven, sixty-four functional schools or provincial schools. The island zone have four divisions. Then division. Karna division, highest division, and Vedam division. The Kinnochi zone, we have two national schools, hundred and twelve schools. Total number of schools hundred and twelve. Out of total hundred and twelve, hundred and four schools are functioning at present. Division, we have four division: Kandavale, Karachi, Palai, and Pune. So Manna, Manna zone, we have five national schools, eighty-seven provincial schools, total ninety-two schools, total ninety-two, ninety-two schools are functions. So the Manna zone also have three divisions: Manna Education Division, Musali Education Division, and the Nanata Education Division. The Madhya zone. We have fifty-four schools, all are provincial schools. Out of fifty-four, fifty-one schools are functioning. The Madhya Pradesh zone has two divisions: one is Madhu division and the other one is the Madhya West division. The Vanya North zone, all are provincial schools. Out of ninety-three schools, eighty-five schools are functioning. And Two divisions. One is the Nirmal division and the Komal division. Pounia South. Altogether, five national schools, and five provincial schools. Total number of schools hundred ten. Out of hundred ten, ninety-eight schools are functioning. The Pounia South zone has three divisions. Pounia South division. Pounia South single division. And Bengal Education. The Malayalam zone we have two national schools and 63 provincial schools. Out of 65, 62 schools are functioning at present. So that zone we have two divisions: Malayalam Petri Division and the Tulukri Division. The Tulukai zone. We have one national school and 60 provincial schools. Total number of school 61. All the schools are functioning in the Tulukai zone. The Tulukai zone have three divisions. One there is Otisudan and Tulukai. This is a school distribution by type 2016. This one already I explained the map. The total number of schools in 2016. This is summary. The national schools, 22 national schools are functioning in the northern province. Provincial schools, total number 1062. Private school six. Total number of schools 
Thank you, Mr. Ravindran. I think uh, my secretary has given you some basic statistics about the provincial schools and their performances. I'm going to talk about the symposium which we had in 2014. I assume you did as Minister of Education in 2013. As you all know, we had the elections at the Northern Province for the first time in the history of Sri Lanka, and uh, we were elected to the Provincial Council in October. And, uh, during one of those days, I met uh, Olympian Dr. Nirvir Singer, who was a former friend of ours and who has been in and out of the war area right from 1992. Uh, so I casually asked him whether it's possible to conduct a conference. And he said yes, and then we worked on it. And uh, it took nearly about six months for us to organize it. And uh, uh, that's how. We were able to start that. The first meeting was held on the 22nd of October 2013, and the final report was submitted on was it R D M O S A D, Doctor? Yes. Yes. R D M O S A is very special for the Tamil Hindu religious people, so we released the uh, <laughs> report on that day. <laughs> we are going to do that, the symposium. So then uh, we thought that we will go down from the bottom from top and going down to all the people and a participatory, a participatory approach. And in fact, uh, I as minister along with uh, Dr. Edith Singham, we visited various places. Uh, we have even single students in my province and I went and met the students, the teachers, the parents and talked to them, uh, found out from them what are the difficulties they face the emotional issues they have got, the behavioral issues they have got. It's quite difficult to talk with uh, the students over there, not like, unlike here. Uh, you know, there are stigmas, they will come out and speak to you openly. And along with the teachers, they will be still shy to speak out. Uh, so it was quite interesting when we had an interaction in 
at Lovonia with single students. So, with all that, and uh, it was advertised in the papers to put in whatever ideas the pub general public we have got, and to email, we have seen various uh, applications, and uh, by combining all those things, we were able to focus on what are the topics we are going to talk. And, uh, go towards the symposium. The key objectives were to provide opportunity to all children to maximize the intellectual potential. That was our in the mission also, you could have seen that. To identify all issues and concerns through situation analysis, create an educated system that is child-centered using locally and internationally available educational resources and technology with a built-in system. Uh, and to build a system to, for improvements in educational methods and curriculum. And uh, finally, we were able to identify the most important issues through this symposium. Uh, there are 11 topics over here. Some committees were formed for these uh, uh, topics, and each subcommittee consists of various people, and they met a lot of times, and then eventually they were put in their papers for the symposium. The psychosocial well-being of students and teachers is a major issue which we face. Uh, after 30 years of war, you will understand that most of us are with trauma, including the minister. I have gone through the war so many times, so many incidents have happened. And uh, when you think at times and reflect, it's certainly it's a big uh, issue. So our children and the teachers, they don't realize that and they are not come out from the cocoon. And we see that in the classroom, when we have about 30, 40 children, uh, there are lots of children who need this support. And because of this, they are not doing the regular learning. That is why they are backing up so. So that's why we are trying uh, to identify various things. And uh, we have already formed committees and already we have addressed this issue. And uh, some uh, sort of concrete steps we have taken it up but still we have to work for a very long period of time and also we need funding on that. Then the teaching and learning national examination, you would have noticed uh, the statistics. Uh, at the primary cycle up to grade five, we call it, and up to five years, uh, 10 years old. At the end of 10 years old, they sit for a, uh, how do you say, competitive examination so that they can score marks. <laughs> Maybe Dr. Sviyogan, who is there, then he can just reflect on that when he speaks. Um, and uh, those who get good marks, they get admission to secondary school in popular schools. So it's a tussle over there, it's a big fight over there. And all the middle class people, parents, they are very keen to take their children for private tuition, and you know, coach them up regularly, and they don't allow them to sleep or play or eat properly, or play four hours. And uh, they drill them. So maybe you can throw in your uh, thinking on this. So that's where the national examinations are concerned. So it's, it happens again at the uh, secondary cycles, at the advanced level, uh, where the kids have to strive hard so that they can get better marks and it's a competitive examination to enter the university. So in Japna, those who study for or science or mathematics, what's the person, medicine or engineering or BSc in science or something like that, uh, they practically go to private tuitions where about 2,000 children sit on, you know, dilapidated uh, temporary cottages and uh, a teacher will, you know, drill let them and teach them and they have to pay extra tuition fees. Just imagine 2,000 of them, them sitting in a cottage and learning. Uh, so, that is the, as far well as the national exams are concerned. And the third one I put that tutor is the impact education system. Already they have prepared a statute at the uh, provincial council. It has not been placed to the council. Uh, it has to go through the council. I hope uh, we could do that this year. Once we get the statutes, then we'll have the power, the minister will have the authority to do it with the tutories and we can you know, regulate them. Already we have a statute uh, for preschool. Uh, I will talk about that later when preschool picks up. 
then administrative appointment, promotion and transfers, and teachers, what are the topics, any planning and research and publication, uh, education management within system. Uh, I have asked for the past two years, the provincial department is trying to uh, create an education management system. They are getting into all the 16,000 teachers, their uh, details and all those things uh, into the computer and also all the students' details so that uh, on a click we can see the performances of the children but uh, still we have not achieved anything much. Uh, then finance, staff requirements and student needs, school quality and development. Early childhood development, uh, we have a separate wing at the Ministry of Education in the flow chart you have seen that. I have a director for early childhood development, already we have passed a statute and uh, the Minister and the Ministry has the full sole authority to conduct all the three schools in our province. Uh, we have we have plenty of uh, teachers, um, most of them have diplomas, but uh, and uh, we pay them only a small allowance. And the preschools are conducted by private agencies, church oriented, and various uh, sector wise uh, people conduct that, and they also pay a little bit of. Um, allowance to the teachers, so this is also a big issue there. Uh, then special needs children, uh, uh, it's normal that in the community that nearly about 10% of the children are special needs children and that also is applicable to our place and as I said earlier because of the war there are still more people with special education but we still have not identified them properly. So it has to be focused and we need plenty of uh, uh, inputs in that uh, sector, continuing education in the Institute of Tamil Medium Education. The secretary also spoke about it. This, uh, Dr. Edwin Singh will highlight that. Uh, at the national level, we have a National Institute of Education. When they, uh, the, recently, I had a time uh, uh, with the National Education Commission, which uh, Ravindra mentioned. Uh, that is the apex body at the national level. And uh, uh, Professor Jetlaga invited me and my others uh, to tell them about our symposium and they wanted to do such a symposium on all the provinces. So the presentation I'm doing today was done at that level. And uh, I hope uh, all the other provinces also be able to do such uh, research so that collectively the National Education Commission will have something new. Some of the recommendations which we had is something like compulsory education up to uh, grade 13, that is about 18, 19 years. And uh, maybe the central government also must have copied that from us and they have just uh, brought that out, out now. And uh, likewise, uh, in a classroom, we have recommended only to have about 30 plus to 32 students maximum. At the national level, they go up to about 35 or more. We are trying to implement that in our province. Uh, we want to get a classroom without punishment, corporate free classrooms, so that uh, Dr. Edith Virasinghe, Dr. Dal here, and various others, Dr. Sriyo in there, uh, we have been striving and struggling, and we had lots of meetings, lots of awareness programs, lots of talking to people. Uh, eventually, we were able to get all the teachers sign the document, which was uh, released some years back by the former Secretary of Education about corporal free punishment and uh, he asked all our teachers to adhere to it and to sign the document saying that I will not do that in the classroom. Uh, all have signed it but it's uh, not practice. <laughs> so the Institute of National Institute of Education was formed way back in the I'm not so sure maybe in the 80s with funding of Japan they created a big campus at the at Maharadaman and that was the time the, it was talked about the National Institute of Education. Later then uh, the performances are not so good so when they did not do much so they created National Education Commission. So I don't know what the National Education Commission is doing. If they do not do much possibly the next government might come and say and they may create another body. So that's why we want to start one for the entire tunnels that is not only for the Northern Tamils, for the entire Tamils of the country. We want to start an Institute of Tamil Media Education. 
uh, if we form that and if we get the approval from the government and also from the others, then uh, they can function separately and uh, give their uh, valuable uh, advice to all the education institutions. And also syllabi could be drawn through them and various other things can be done through this Institute of Tamil Communication. Uh, then the last one is about the Northern Province Administration System. And uh, I talked about the recommendations and uh, uh, these are the recommendations we had about 35 recommendations on the psychosocial well-being and teaching learning about 83 tutories and the impact one administration appointment for three financial thing about 19 and learning in database and about early childhood development 21 special needs and continuing education institute of Tamil Indian education totaling about 272 and uh, you could see our uh, symposium papers on the website uh, Northern Education System Review and uh, uh, with uh, on the basis of the symposium uh, report, uh, we agreed to come over here and uh, talk about the Northern Education System and from that we could take parts of it to implement it so that the system in our place, uh, in our country, could enhance the better education. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Gurugula Raja, for that comprehensive presentation and ESR recommendations. Next, I think I would invite Dr. Edavir Singham. Uh, Dr. Edavir Singham's resume is about three, four pages long, and he's very accomplished. I'm going to let him introduce himself, and he's going to talk today about the ITME. Thank you, Vanessa, for inviting us. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, uh, CTC, Denton, uh, and David uh, for inviting me. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm coming as a diaspora or I'm coming as a, a citizen of Sri Lanka. I'm both. <laughs> seen uh, school divisions 1AB, um, 2C, C2, and 3. Um, for those who are not familiar with that, 1AB means uh, up to A level, both arts, science, commerce, and all the other subjects. Um, 2C is up to A level, only arts and some and that art and commerce, but no science. Um, 
then um, <coughs> three is primary schools. Uh, some go up to middle school, depending on where they are. Uh, just to clear that, so you know that uh, the science, math schools are very small. And national schools means that the provincial school runs them, but uh, national uh, central ministry funds them and supervise them, but now they are virtually given everything back, but they do have control over that, those schools also. Um, <clears throat> this is just to illustrate um, uh, the red part, uh, one of the issues are uh, uh, teacher education. Um, they do not have the, you don't have to have a teaching credential to teach in the schools. You don't have to have a degree. Uh, mostly to um, uh, after high school or after two years certificate or a three year diploma. Um, so the capacity of the teachers uh, uh, both in uh, subject matter as well as uh, uh, creative teaching abilities uh, uh, need to be improved. And um, I don't want to go through all the details so can read that. Um, um, so classroom management skills is a question. Um, then creative, innovative, inquiry-based teaching is almost none, but there are teachers who have come across uh, who are very good, very good. So, um, if, if you see here the tutories, um, um, uh, the parents prefer their students to go to the tutories than to the schools. Uh, so, they don't want the schools to have any sports or competition or recreation activities after two o'clock. They would rather have the schools have them during the school time. If you ask the parents why, they say, well, they have to go to the tuition. So you do all the uh, other activities that children should do during the school time. So that's what's happened. So the, competition is practice. So that leads to teachers complaining they don't have enough time to finish the curriculum. Uh, especially in the first term where yeah, a lot of activities come. In the last term, they go into doing past papers rather than teaching because they want to get the students to pass. Um, <clears throat> so that uh, Students' performance comes down, but the students' performance has come down after the war started within 30 years. But during the war, I did uh, do a study when I was concentrated to the Northeast when they were together, uh, commissioned by the government and um, Governor John Seta and Mr. Dikulala, the secretary. Um, and, uh, this is the education of children in the war zone, both north and east. Um, but uh, it was specific. During that time, uh, Northern Province was still third in the, all the provinces um, in the performance of the A level and all of them. Um, I don't know whether it's because uh, when you are pressured, you do better. <laughs> and you cannot under pressure. In 1997, I had the statistics on that. Um, that is uh, virtually just now displayed, pretty much displaced <coughs> children studying in under trees. They were till third. And Burmary, um, in the college and the leading schools, seniors, they were get, still getting 80% pass at that time. Um, so it's a lot of uh, pressure and under that. So kind of blame the teachers entirely or the administrators because 
they are thinking that they are sometime in one hut, there will be three schools, three principals functioning. And so you see, and I have personally watched it, and Mr. Guru Raja, uh, whom I have known since 94, uh, we know the situation, we have been, we have been meeting <coughs> virtually uh, every month. Um, then we have problems in uh, school building, maintenance building, after the war. Um, both floors, there was more. But engineers don't want to work for education department or any government department because they get paid outside more. So they have difficulty uh, recruiting. Um, so those are the challenges the minister and secretaries face um, in the education sector for sure. And that's where the, the three in one school works, requirements, and buildings, those will take them a start shortage. And they have no vehicles to move around, uh, they want more to ride to go. 